Okay, so now we're going to get into nonlinear systems equations like we have here. The square makes it nonlinear. So the directions for all these problems, it'll just say solve. And so these are the two that we're going to look at. Now we're going to look use the same two techniques we talked about before with the linear examples. We're going to apply that to here. We can either use substitution or elimination. Now this one, it's probably going to be easiest to do this one by substitution because this is, the y is already solved for us already. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put it down into the second equation. So what that looks like is you have x squared minus, instead of the y we put in x minus 5, that's going to be squared equals 5. So by doing that we got rid of the y, replace it with x minus 5, but don't forget we have to square that because there was originally a square on the original y. So now we want to solve this equation. Uh, we're going to expand all this out and we're going to solve for x. x is our only variable. So x squared minus Okay, so this inside here, we, we want to multiply that out. That's x minus 5 times x minus 5. So you'll get x squared minus 10x plus 25. If you were to multiply all that out, x minus 5 times x minus 5, you've got to do the FOIL method. Don't just distribute the square because you might miss the middle term that's in there. Uh, this equals 5. Now, we're going to uh, simplify all this. Okay, the negative sign has to go through each one. x squared minus x squared plus 10x minus 25 equals 5. So we distributed the minus sign all the way through, that way we can get rid of the parentheses. In this case, the x squares, those are going to cancel out, and so that makes it easier to solve for. Now we're just going to solve for x. Uh, you can do that by adding 25 to both sides. So we add 25 and add 25 here, and we get 10x is equal to 30. Divide both sides by 10, and we get our first answer. We get x is equal to 3. Now uh, going back into here, this one is already solved for y already, so we can just put our answer directly in there to get the, uh, the answer for y. We have y equals x minus 5, now we'll just put the 3 in there, y equals 3 minus 5, and we get y is equal to uh, negative 2. So our answer is going to be 3 and negative 2. So this particular one, we only have one point of intersection. Now, if we wanted to look at the graph of this, now we're not, we're not expected to know what the graphs look like in this section uh, just yet because we haven't talked about what that one looks like. That would be uh, kind of in, in, the, uh, trig, uh, in a trig class at the very end. That's where you would cover graphs of that. Um, but I'm just going to give you a quick sketch of what this one looks like. So this rough sketch, this one here would be a form of a hyperbola. And these are graphs that, that kind of do this. They have two ends that go in each direction, and it looks, it looks something like that. Well, then you have, and they kind of, kind of keep on going out in each direction like this, kind of forever, so the graph looks like that. Well, we have a x, y equals x minus 5. So what that does is that would be a, a line that kind of does uh, something like this. It would go through there, and so somewhere around in this region, you'd have those two points coming together, and then that would be the, the place where the two lines would come together, that's your point of intersection. So that's really what you're doing here. You're still finding out where two lines come together, it's just that one of the lines just ends up being nonlinear, and so you have different curves like this. But the graphs you don't have to worry about in this section, but I just wanted to show you what it is that you're actually doing.